Now, let's get into the study today, overcoming demonic resistance. And the first tool in overcoming this resistance is the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. We all know that scripture. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They love not their lives unto death. There's somebody you've been having a dream and you've been seeing yourself in a particular class. I don't know whether it's secondary school or primary school, but I'm seeing a class. You've been seeing yourself, every time you see yourself in that class, there's always something that you are trying to find. There's always like some confusion. Hey, God, whatever was taken off out of your life in that season of your life you might have been taken somewhere in that school maybe outside that school but that's why you're going to that season of your life whatever was taken today by the power of the most high by the workings of the angels of god by the power of the holy ghost and by the blood of sacrifice the blood that speaks better things than that of abel the blood that paid for your glory that paid for your star that paid for your spirit for your salvation, for your redemption. By that blood, we demand now. Whatever was taken from you, restored to you. In the name of Jesus. I hear in the spirit, we cut off the head of that evil bird. Now! In the name of, I don't even know what a young paro is. I'm telling you, I don't even know what it is, but I had it in the spirit and I see his head and his head is cut off. No! We demand it. Yes, I see a hammer crushing that head. No! Pato kick akiamos lubada. Arekabobuskufiaba. Every evil bird, evil force, taking the form of a bird. The head is cut off. The head is crushed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. By the authority, we have decreed it. It is so. What is yours is restored. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So he said, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimonies. And they loved not their lives Unto the death. See, let me start with the last line. The last line, they love not their lives unto death. Meaning, look, we have to live lives where we are totally committed to Jesus. Sink or swim, live or die. Yeah. If God decides not to bless anymore, will you still serve him? That is loving him unto death. If God decides and say, I'm not blessing anybody again. If you want to come to heaven, come. If you don't want to come, no problem. We you still serve him? Stay there. Serve God. Tell God, Lord, I choose to serve you because you are God. Whether you bless or you don't bless, I choose to serve you because you are God. I choose. I choose. All right? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I read devotion a little bit. Jesus already alerted us his body about the activities of the gates of hell against us. When he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, he was making us see that there are gates of hell and they would try to resist us, our growth, our progress, all right? Everything advancing the kingdom, advancing our life, they would try. Diff That's why I use the word gates. It's not one gate. Gates of hell. There are gates that resist marriage. Ah, you will marry. Barokansias or Komanto. Erika Pepesco. Every gate of hell resisting marriage in your life. Every gate of hell resisting childbearing, fruit of the womb, in the life of any woman trusting for that. I declare that gate of hell. Smile! Broken in 
curses in the name of Jesus. So Jesus warned us. He said the gates of hell will try to resist us. All right? So it's important for us to now overcome how to overcome and subdue that hell. But Jesus promised us that the gates of hell shall not prevail. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. Cannot prevail. Come on, say it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Jesus said it. I hold on to that. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Jesus said it. I hold on to it. Jesus said it. It has come to pass in my own life. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Jesus said it. I have it in my life. In the name of Jesus. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Hallelujah. The gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Now the first way to overcome hell and all his host is by applying the blood of Jesus. That's why I said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. All right. So the text scripture mentioned to us that we overcame by the we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. All right. And the word of our testimony. The blood of Jesus is one of the instruments that God has given to us for overcoming the enemy. And two ways this works is this. Number one, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. Let's read 1 John in chapter 1. That's the first thing. Because as long as the devil, as long as there is no sin, the devil has no landing space in your life. But if there is sin, then he has a landing space. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, base, that's the basic thing. And that's why God wants you to pursue the life of holiness so that you don't sin. But he also made provision that he knows that while you are growing and perfecting holiness, there will be mistakes. And he has made provision that the blood will cleanse us immediately from those things. So the enemy will not have any hold. The Bible said, give him no space. Give him no, no, give him no space. Give him no stand. Let, no, let there be no place he can put his feet and say, okay, yes, I've arrived. <laughs> no space. All right, let's read uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 6. Oh, time is gone. If we say that we fellowship with him and walk in darkness. Oh, let me start from verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6. If we say that we fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, that means we're pursuing holiness and pursuing righteousness and we're, you know, trusting in his grace and we're living that lifestyle. He said, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You keep your koinonia with him. That's why koinonia is very important. People skip this and think fellowship is just talking about we gathering together. Yes, that's part of fellowship. All right. Prayer time is also part of fellowship. But the real fellowship is the koinonia, where you come to just spend time with God. So he said, we have fellowship with one another. And when that, when this is complete, you're walking in the light, you're pursuing the life of holiness, you have, you have your, your, you are keeping your koinonia with God. He said, and the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all, not some, all sins. Then in verse 8, he said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth not in us. So he's saying that even when you make mistake, don't say there's no sin. No. Verse 9, I said, for if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is faithful to forgiving us. That's what it means. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteous. You are purified. So Satan has no right to lay accusation against you. He has no foothold. If you read Joshua, I mean, sorry, Zechariah chapter 3, Joshua the high priest was resisted by the devil because his garment was filthy. So when you sin, you, you stain your hands and you stain your garment. That's what happens. When you sin, you lie, you cheat, you fornicate, you commit adultery, you stain your hands, you stain your garment. It gives the right opportunity. It gives the right and opportunity to the devil to resist you. But when there is no sin, ha, ka, da, 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 hey. And how do, you, how do you make sure there's no sin? Live right. 
When you make mistake, go to God and ask for forgiveness. He cleanses you from all sins, cleanses you from all unrighteousness, and then pum, there's no place for the devil. That's the number one way of applying the devil. I mean, applying the blood to overcome the devil. That's the number one way of applying the blood to overcome the devil. The number two way is by receiving the covering of the blood. When you plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, you plead the blood over your family, you plead the blood of Jesus over things that you own, the blood of Jesus comes as a protection. That is proven by what happened in Egypt when God told the Israelites to mark their doorposts with the blood. So the top of the doorpost was marked, the sides were marked, and the angel of destruction could not enter the house. What that is showing us is this, we can apply the blood. We don't need to get a physical lamb's blood. No, the blood of Jesus is spiritual. So I can apply the blood to cover my family. I can apply the blood to cover my business. I can apply the blood to cover my property. And then the darkness cannot access it because the blood is saying this property has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And Jesus has paid for everything. You just need to put the receipt there. The receipt is the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. I sprinkle my life with the blood. I sprinkle my children with the blood. I sprinkle my family with the blood. I sprinkle my business with the blood. I sprinkle every opportunity I have with the blood. Now! And I declare the end of evil with us if they attempt to touch anything that is mine in the name of Jesus. The blood shakes the heaven and the earth on your behalf. I know these are things we know, but sometimes you need to hear it again so it refreshes your mind that this is one of the weapons God has given us, the blood of Jesus. is one of the instruments God has given us to overcome hell, to subdue darkness. I want you to pray and say, Father, I receive the blood. I receive forgiveness. Please forgive me of every sin, known or unknown to me. Please forgive me, my Father. Have mercy on me. I plead the blood upon myself in the name of Jesus. Praying the Holy Ghost on that. Have mercy on me. With all my heart, I choose to run and follow the right path. I choose to follow the right way. I choose to do the right thing. Ah, with all my heart, by the strength of the Holy Spirit in me. And Lord, have mercy on me. Any area where I've missed my mark, where I've missed my step, where I've done what is not pleasing to you, any area where I've sinned against you, any area where I've done what does not please you, Oh God, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, Sukaria and Messi Akokuye Akokuye Rando Skapaya. That's why Jesus said we should pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So pray with me the second prayer and say, Father, I soak every aspect of my life with the blood. I, I apply the blood of sprinkling on my family members. My, my my spouse, my children, and if you're not married, apply it on all your family members. Yes, I apply the blood upon everything that is mine. Properties, everything. I soak them with the blood. My cars, my, 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 my things, my house, whatever you have, sprinkle the blood. I declare, the house you are living in, even if it's not your own, sprinkle the blood there. I declare it's covered with the blood. I sprinkle all everywhere with the blood, and I declare that the blood secures, the blood protects, the blood shields from all darkness in the name of Jesus. So we are praying now, I see a sword. Yes, a sword, the light forming a sword. Yes, and it's stepping in, it's stepping in. And, and the Lord is telling me, as you plead the blood of Jesus over your things, the sword comes to cut off darkness, to cut off the enemy, to cut off evil. And evil will not be able to touch you. I release that word into your life now. The blood secures you. The blood protects you. The blood covers you. The blood, yes, secures all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. That Kori Emo Juganga, Arika Papusko, you are blessed. Arika Manjo of your mercy, Arika Papusko, in Jesus' name. When you put the blood upon your home, Satan cannot come there. You have to believe it. You can't put the blood and be expecting Satan to come. What you have done in that process spiritually is that you have applied the blood, you have removed the blood. 
You know, when you think and believe that Satan can come after you have applied the blood. Yes, that's what happens. That's what happens. The moment you apply the blood, believe Satan cannot come. It blocks him off. The angel of death could not have enter the houses that had the mark of the blood. They couldn't. Because there's a sword. God just showed us by revelation now. There's a sword that will cut it. Parushana! Karo bashi kara. Eriamosoba. There's a sword that will cut the devil. When you have applied the blood to cover the house you are living in, there is no devil that can enter. The sword of God will cut that demon, will cut that darkness in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are blessed. Say with me, say in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is my covering. The blood of Jesus is my protection. By the blood, I'm secured in the name of Jesus. And I declare I am the rich and uh, I'm the strong. I'm the healthy. I'm the favored one. With long life, God has satisfied me and all that am I. We live long in the name of Jesus. We do not die young in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I am one spirit with the Lord. And therefore, I enjoy intimacy with God every day. I hear his voice. I engage his presence. I'm a carrier of the voice. I'm the presence of God. And I'm, a, I'm the presence of God. And I fellowship with him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Engage you every day. He wants to talk to you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to have discussions with you. He's looking for that. Someone said sometimes, he said, God is not a talker to you. I said, you have not met him. When you meet him, you might have heard about him. You might have expressed his hand in miracles, wonders done in your life. But if you have really met him, you will know he talks. He likes talking. He enjoys being with you.